Hey, it's Bonnie with Board Games and it's Hamtag! Light! Light! It's Hamtag Light! Alright, today we are doing our top five Kickstarters, the KSs. And there's no other parameters on that. That could be anything. So yep. I'm curious to see where you're going because sometimes we will go in cross purposes. Sometimes we're right on, we're on rails. Okay. And you're going to start off, we go five, four, three, two, one, and... I, you know, I don't know if I, what, I hope it ain't on your list. You had this SB, oh, 1955, it's like a Twilight Struggle, super light. Hmm. You remember that thing? I do. Espionage yeah. or something? Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I said, where'd you get that? And he said, Kickstarter. And I said, what the heck's Kickstarter? And that was, is that what back, started back when we were playing at church, like 2011, I never even heard of it. I was an early adopter. Yeah. You were way ahead of the, you're, you're a hipster. <laughs> oh, I bought, I, well, we'll get into some, inf one infamous uh, deal okay. as well. We're also going to do, right before we get to our number one, we will do honorable mentions then. Yes. But we won't spend a lot of time on no. it. That was something that Judd saw and we agree. Watch so, Mojo videos. There you go. Okay. You told me. Yeah. Okay. So I have backed uh, 14 Kickstarters. Okay. Um, I have 10 smiley faces, three sad faces, and one neutral. And that's brand new. If yes. you haven't been on there, it's you, pretty can do, cool. you can do emojis. And my number five is Airborne Commander. Oh. I put some neato stats on here. Okay, designed by Aaron Louster, Louster uh, Stratamax Games. It, the campaign ended in April 4th, 2015. They promised it seven months later. They hit it right on the nose, which is like a super rare Kickstarter thing. Um, it cost 25 bucks for the game. They required $3,000 to pass the Kickstarter. You know, if you're not familiar with it, if you don't get there, you're not out any money. It just doesn't charge you, hit your card. Um, and they won't make the game. Yeah. And if you do, and then you have buyer's remorse, as long as you back out before the end of the, the Kickstarter campaign, you're not out. You're not off the hook. Once it finishes, if it hits the number, then it hits your card. They charge your card. Um, so three thousand was required. It hit a little over twenty nine thousand dollars. Six hundred sixty three backers. They had a, um, Kickstarter goals. If you're not familiar with that, it's ways to entice people to keep getting more and more people on. It's usually special stuff that you'll only get for this. It causes a frenzy. Yeah. Can. Um, they were eight for eight on it. Most of it involved changing tuck boxes to this nice thick box, messing eight, around with eight the rules. For eight on it. I mean, they all, offered eight of them oh, and hit all eight all of them. them. Yeah. And they offered four unique cards, which I'm a little cynical because a few years later they had an expansion with like 10 cards, and I'm betting they would have had 14 and just pulled some of them up. Or that's what you don't ever know is sometimes they'll they'll have a goal, you'll hit it, and then they'll add a new goal. Mm -hmm. And so eight for eight means they might have actually only been eight for 11, but you never knew the yeah. other ones. So but sometimes they'll throw them all up there, just entice you. Right. And let's get the next one. Let's get the next one. Right. So I think when they hit the eight, they just flat ran out of ideas. Huh. So, cause I mean, they were just trucking through this. Um, I have an empty box. The only bummer about this is that I sleeve my cards cause deck builders, you're sh shuffling all the time. They won't fit in the sleeves. So. And I've stolen from some of your ideas where I liked your light box deal where you didn't bring the whole box. Mm -hmm. So some of the stuff I've staged is just the lid. Okay. That's I like cool. what you did there. Um, yeah, this is I like keep it all in bag, in a Ziploc bag. I wish they'd made that a little bigger, but such is life. Um, anyways, the game itself, it's a deck builder. This means if you're looking, okay, what enticed me to it was Airborne. You put, even though it's the 101st Airborne and not the 82nd, it's airborne. Um, but it is a deck builder. If you're looking for a real deep, you know, you're an ASL guy. Ooh, it's not going to do that. Band of Brothers, Conflict of Heroes, Command, I mean, Combat Commander. It's not going to scratch that itch. It's a deck builder. If you've played one. Now, that said, something like um, uh, Martin Wallace's uh, Acres. Yeah, that's more of a war where you actually the cards are doing things to the board. But this is just a pure deck builder, kind of like... Um, uh, the one, no, the one I play all Pokemon. the time. Um, no, the space Yu -Gi -Oh. one. No, wow, I've oh, been up for like no, four I know, hours. I know it. Now I can't. Uh, space S -S -S something. Wait a minute. He's gonna look because I have it because I play it on my phone. Star Star Realms. Realms. I've Thank got you. It on my phone yeah, I played like nine thousand. Here's times. the problem with deck builders. Yeah, after playing the apps, I almost can't go back to the real thing. It's yeah. so stinking slow. Yeah. 
I wish this was an app. I'd be maybe it is. Mythic I'm so slow Vail. on the apps. Mythic Veil. Vale. I'm all over that dang. And then I played it with a buddy again. I brought out the old one. I'm like, it's slow. Yeah. I have to manually shuffle. Yeah, it's like Star Realms. I played it almost nine thousand times on the phone. And seriously, I recorded this on BGG. <laughs> um, it's not really a space game. It's especially after Starfleet it's space battles. Space themed. They're all just very species. weak. It's yeah, color matching, well, sure. but I'm really into it. So, yeah, but, but the aliens and the way they they're they can be that super aggressive power overtake. Yeah, but that's yeah, uh, yeah. I, I don't feel it, but I love ah, it. I Nine thousand like, plays, it. you know, I gotta love yeah, it. I feel but anyways, this one, it's thin theme, but it's pretty cool. But the artwork is phenomenal. Um, really, really cool. You can look at the pictures on BGG. Really, really top-notch artwork, and it's fun. Mm -hmm. It's it's a solo-only game. That's that's mm -hmm. a to me that's an advantage because I mean for what I want to do well, for a deck builder that's yeah. pretty, you know, pretty unique really. Yeah. I mean not that you can't solo deck builders, but and the, and you can sp the core rules if you think it's too easy just add more of these disorganizer like the wound cards the the junk cards that just junk up your hand add more you can adjust it pretty easily the. Um, they came out with an expansion a couple years later, and um, a snafu, which if you don't know what it stands for, look it up. Um, Situation normal, all fouled up. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> it was okay. It made it harder, um, but it, it was all right. It, to me, it should have been in the original. Maybe they thought of ideas later, but it wasn't a bad little thing. I, I never Maybe the expansion would have, like, uh, the Brits, and you could go into Arnhem hmm. or something. No. Nah. What did bug me, though, all going because I gripe about it on my comments, was that one of the cards in the extra was St. Mary Gleese, mm. and it's like, and this is just annoys me because it's me, um, that's an 82nd Airborne drop. <laughs> and the guy hanging on the steeple with the church was 82nd Airborne, which is what they show. You should have made an 82nd Airborne game. You'd have solved your problem. There's nothing unique to the 101st in this. Got it. So that bugs me. Got and St. Mary Gleese is one of the, I think, the five drop zones in, in at Fort Bragg. It's like Nyamiga and Sicily. Anyways, my dad was in it. Um, right. So uh, anyways, but it's it's a solid little game. I never gripped. Now, I was a little worried and I backed it because up front, you know, it's like 20. But I was like, hey, at the end of the day, I had heard this company. 25 bucks i'm not going to squawk too yeah. much and you know hey somebody will sue their some somebody will sue their rear end off and the oh, lawyer will get all the money but yeah, um not for 25 bucks yeah i was like yeah i can deal with that and it looked pretty cool and it was i got it i got plenty of places you pull it out at least once a year my bardi is con so that's my number five airborne commander that's the con named after me yeah that's how much he likes <laughs> me all right mine's a little bit bigger than your little one Woo! so this is weight kick hold on this has magnets. So these little dudes, it's like foosball, and you have control of these guys underneath with these little magnets on the side. Now I paid a little bit extra for the grass field. And I put carnauba wax on there as well, just to keep it from moving quick. So now, first of all, I'm very impressed with Judd's stats. Judd even sent me this cool thing that I actually thought was a tab somewhere on Kickstarter that had all that information he shared for you. And I'm like, I can't find it. And I finally texted you or, or whatever, or messaged you and said, hey, where's that tab? And you're like, oh no, you called me. And you're like, no, I collated all that. I yeah. found all that over here, over there, over there. I'm like, oh, I'm not doing that. Yeah, there's a lot I of research, tab. but I'm a dork. I like yeah, to do I that want stuff. that tab though, because I was impressed. So here's what I did do. Um, I did not write down the date I got this. A lot of these are very early when I was doing Kickstarters, very early. There were only 108 backers for this. Wow. They got $25,515, and it was a, with shipping, this was 135 bucks. I had seen this at BGG. I knew my kids would like it. Um, I enjoyed foosball, but I didn't want a huge table. <laughs> Let me put it this way. Um... It, it, you know, the idea that you're you're manipulating manually these men by the magnets that are on there, and you can only come to the middle. And I knew I would use it as like a party game opener, or, or a year, when we have board game groups over here, I'll usually have this out on the table, and Bo, my almost 13 year old, will come in and be playing somebody. It makes a lot of racket. I don't like a lot of racket. My wife keeps wanting actual. Foosball, I'm like, mm-mm. And she's like, what about air hockey? I'm like, no. Oh, oh. God, it's worse. Oh, boy, that's giving me headaches after a while. <laughs> I know. So I got this. Love it. 
Seth, who's my 11 year old now, has Down syndrome, loves this game. And it works with uh, a lot of things that are nice, you know, with his disability. He totally gets what he's doing. He's counting off the score as we're going down. Um, all right, I'll play a little light with him. I'm not trying to like, you know, mm -hmm. my bow will come down and be like, oh, how did he win? I'm like, well, maybe he got a good shot, but he's good at it as well. So this is my number five. I've been extremely pleased with it. It's so light, easy to play. And when kids come over and stuff, they can gravitate to it. And it's chunky and blocky and it can't really be broken, probably. Comes with these little tiny soccer balls. I removed those so I could tip it around and show you. That is weight kick. I don't think I have any other stats. Um, nope, I got it. Okay. My number four is New York 1776 by Worthington Publishing. This was their first Kickstarter. My very first one had kind of soured me. It was delivered. It was a dog. I'm not going to mention its name. Um, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, so I was a little bummed. But, hey, I had been been kind of a fan of these guys for a while. So I took a plus American Revolution. That's my thing. Love it. Um, so the game itself, the phone went to sleep. It's all right. Here we go. Grant and Mike Wiley, the designers, it was 2014. Uh, they The campaign ended at the end of May 2014. They promised it a month later. It was actually three weeks late, but that wasn't, that's pretty darn good. But what, what it was, was um, really good. Yeah. Uh, it cost 59 bucks. They needed 2,500 to pass it. They got a little over 17,000, 254 backers. They went four for five on their stretch goals. What was funny was this was their first attempt at it. So they were kind of, you know, like all these guys, like the uh, Glory to Rome guy. Boy, he screwed up. He promised free shipping and ended up losing his house over that one. Um, so sometimes people don't know what they're what they're in for so the black box. yeah and they want to get they want to get so excited so it they did a pretty good job but they did catch them off guard their first uh, uh their first stretch goal was this book it's an osprey book gives you background that's pretty cool it's like extended designer notes mm -hmm. and i think they thought oh this will this will get us through <laughs> this thing boom first day they had already hit that stretch goal and i think they were sitting there going oh what do something else so they did um so then they were kind of shooting from the hip. They did, um, if you've played Waterloo, the Columbia block game that's been around since like 74 from Avalon Hill. Breakout board. Yeah, they had the um, the last one, the fourth edition that Columbia put on Kickstarter. They had these little green terrain blocks. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty cool idea. So they used that idea. Then they, they hit that stretch goal. So they went with some, some um, uh, tactics blocks. Like might make somebody be able to move two spaces on the battle board instead of one. It's, it's a pretty cool little idea. And it's cheap. Yeah, and, and I like them. Blocks and yeah. stickers. Yeah. And then their last one, they had had, um, though like the infantry might be crossed rifles, they had made alternate artwork if you wanted these stickers, and it like showed a guy with the with the hat and the, you know, kind of period piece. Right. Tricorn. Yeah, and then because I'm a sap, I didn't. They had an add-on where you could get extra blocks if you wanted to stick them both, so I did it that way, even though I've never used the original cross. I really like the alternate art. <laughs> so um, anyway, so they hit all that stuff. Now about the game itself, why it's here, because I did a combination of how good I thought the um, campaign went and mostly the game. I put a lot more emphasis on the game. The game itself, it's a block game and it is crazy fun. Um, really light game takes 10 minutes to teach maybe 15 at tops but they had a how to play this in five minutes on the kickstarter campaign hmm. um if you've played a, like the old quebec game the old um i think uh waterloo might use this now where you have three sections and if one of them breaks you out and bad things happen or you can withdraw mm -hmm. um it uses that and boy that and with the with the rules and the, the train blocks and the tactics and the way that the Hessians make the militia more likely to flee and stuff, it, they're pretty tense little battles. What if they'd been drinking beer? No. You know, that was a myth. They were not drunk on Christmas of 17. I think they were just surprised because it was Christmas. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a long thing, but if Surely, you read it. Surely, though, I am German. Surely there was a little bit of beer drinking. Probably not drunk, though. There was what it really drink. was was that they were out there getting, they were, you know, they're out there foraging for the food. Right. And they were getting harassed all the time. Every time they'd go out, they were getting shots Sniped. taken at them. Okay. Yeah. And they were just harassed. And they sent notes to Grant, the British guy. He's like, ah, whatever. Quit whining. Suck it up, buttercup. And I'm not out there, but I'll tell you what to do. And they were just <laughs> exhausted, harassed all the time. And when that Nor'easter kicked in, they thought, 
Finally, but we'll get a break. Down. We'll right. get a break. Well, and Washington cursed the weather because it slowed him down, but it's actually the best thing because they were not alert. Sorry, I just really no, went off at an perfect. offshoot. Went perfect. on an offshoot. I shoot. said they were drunk, and you you immediately went apocryphal. That, that, that's that's really a sore spot with me just because, <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm all about George Washington because he's awesome, <laughs> but I will give the Hessians their due. I still think it was the key to do. I mean, it's like the Tet Offensive when they think, oh, yeah. there's nothing going to happen. It's a big festival. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and I was taught that in third grade, that, yeah, they were drunk and partying hard well, enough. So I was right there Come with the get my time tree. machine ready. Yeah, the cherry tree getting shot yeah. down was part of it. I'm going to go well. back and fix that. Rectif <laughs> I'm going to rectify that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways, um, it is a very tightly balanced game. I played a lot of these games where it really comes down to a die roll. Um, and, the like I said, the combat is thrilling. The um, What's interesting is, um, okay, the trick to this game is is it's not a really strong simulation. It's why you don't see a lot of games on this. The British were going to take New York, and that's all there was to it. I mean, the, they come out with like 32,000 against 16 or 20, and then the Americans started getting hit with um, smallpox. So they were really, and then they were up against a professional force who outflanked them right off the jump. Um, what's interesting about it though, the victory conditions are not historical, but it's what should have been historical had the British known what was up. The British wanted New York for a centralized port that was kind of right, really central to all the colonies and a lot of loyalist sympathies there. They looked at its military objective. What they should have been trying to do is destroy the Continental Army. If they would have, they would have won the war there. Howe said as much a couple years later in his memoirs that we screwed up. That was our chance to win the war. When Washington got out, we lost the war. Um, but the trick is you kill the Washington block because he's primus into Paris, or you drive the you you drive the American strength total down so much, which would have effectively destroyed the army. That should have been the historical goal. The Americans are trying to drive the British down to a level. Now that was kind of what Washington was doing: make them buy this land at a price, like they did at Bunker Hill. They took the hill. They took fifty percent casualties. Now, real quick, can you still get this game? Uh. Because you're going to get people all intrigued, and then you'll be like, ah, oh, they got to re kickstart it. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't even check the secondary market. What? You should be able to That's get not it. on your list? Yeah, you should get Your list should include if it's available currently. Yeah, I checked there. I don't think it's on their site. I checked it. It's more the recent Your list stuff. is broken. Yeah, my list is broken. <laughs> but um, uh, now that um, driving the British down to a certain <laughs> level. And what it was is you're, you're kind of making them lose their will to fight the war. Because when they took Bunker Hill, one of their guys back in Parliament said, if we keep winning wars, if we win, keep keep this up, we're going to lose the war, basically. Who said that in Parliament? I don't know. Some British dude. Not Once worth again, memorizing. Broken. Jabroni. <laughs> Loser. Um, no, nah, but he said more, more victories, a few more victories like this, we'll lose the whole war. So that's kind of it. Now, what ends up happening is as you fall back off of Brooklyn, back to Manhattan, northern Manhattan, you should head for Jersey and out. But that would take like five turns and the game's over. you got to last, I don't remember how many turns. But if the Americans can have, can keep the British from hitting their objectives, that's the alternate way. What ends up happening, Washington goes up, I'll put it for this camera, up to northern Manhattan, breaks for Connecticut, heads back down to Brooklyn, and it's like this game of tackle the man with the football. That is the part that no matter what, Washington was never going to do this. It's not like if he can say like, like one, well, 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 like it's some um, reality TV show or, or not a. It's like this game, tackle the man with the football. Yeah, which is football. No, no, no. If you you play tackle the man with the football, you get like five guys, and one guy has the football, and you all try to tackle him. And then he dances and dances and dances. Anyways, hey, by the way, Barry Sanders just tackle him. Wichita's most famous Wichita's most famous son, Barry Sanders. That's why he's so that's why he was so wicked, because <laughs> he, he was that? awesome. Yeah. He credits that. That's why he was so elusive, was tackle the man with the football. Um yeah, it's a, like a five on one, because you know if you don't have twenty two guys or whatever, ten on ten or five on five. Of, a lot of friends. You got three or four guys, you play tackle the man with the football, it works on your skills. I had more friends than that. Okay. We could always play. Oh, well, that's why you're not elusive either. <laughs> that's true. That's slow. Uh, just stood there. So anyways, it's not a great sim, but it's a, I mean, there's a little bit in there. It's interesting to squint, but as soon as you start dancing around, but what's really cool is the British are, Washington's faster. The British are stronger. If they certain roles with the way the ships, they can try to cut off routes. You're trying to corner them. It's almost like that checkers game, the devil and four tailors. If you ever played that with five checkers, mm -hmm. look it up. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I played with, 20 checkers. Nope. Um, the, uh, but 
Well, the British end up getting a little too aggressive and start splitting their forces, and there's like a battle, a roll for initiative that usually goes the British way, but there's like a 25% it can break the Americans, and suddenly they have their combined force. Boom, you get this um, battle for Harlem Heights, which is when the British stretched out too far, got a little too aggressive, Washington counterattacked them. So there's little historical things going on, but overall, not a simulation, but it is crazy fun to play and as long as the Americans don't really screw up and set their starting force up stupidly which I have done this happened to BGG con I'm mm -hmm. sure that guy's laughing at me now um, that game gets over pretty quickly otherwise you set it up in a pretty normal way it's a pretty darn balanced game and really a lot of fun so that's my number four Ooh. New York 1776 well, I have nearly as much to say about my number four which is Heroes of Stalingrad now here's the interesting thing so, of course, this comes out of the Heroes of Normandy system. Devil Pig Games, um, uh, Yellow used to put it out. They also, I think they were the ones that brought it to the United States. The, so there's two things on this. So first, let me go over my stats. Um, there were 1,720 backers for this, which got them 127,915. I did do the all-in pledge which I believe, I've got a note here, I think was 110 euros. But here's what I did and what they did, which was a little different. I missed this when it happened. And then I caught some news about it like a month later, and I was like, whoa, maybe even a few months more than that. I went to the uh, like their site, and they actually had a deal for late pledges. You, I think it cost, oh, I can't remember if it cost a little bit more or something, but you could come in late. I came in late. There was some fear in regards to were they actually going to get it out. Devil Pigs had some problems. I don't know all the details. I watched a few things in the comments, um, but I went all in. Um, what was cool about this was I like the Heroes of Normandy system. I really do. And I talked about it on a ham tag episode about they needed to do Heroes of Stalingrad. And people are like, hello, it's called Heroes of Normandy. They can't move it around. I'm like, sure they could. They could just, or I said I wanted a Russian version, I think is mm -hmm. what I said. And I was like, sure you could. You could do Heroes of Stalingrad or, or Heroes of Arnhem. You could do mm -hmm. uh, almost anything. Although they did do some bridge stuff. So that was cool. I, I uh, uh, really was thrilled. I like the Stalingrad battle in general, that battling in the factories. This has a, uh, this game, the Heroes system, Heroes of Normandy system, has a, a heavy cartoon comic book style. This is not any kind of, I'm sure everybody knows, no kind of grognard game here. This is more theme and color and, and cool bits. And it's got a good little activation system I won't go into, but it's definitely on this weird comic theme style. You can definitely take out a tiger tank with just one Judd and a grenade. Or well, Kermit could do that. He could. You could too. In this game. He doesn't need the grenade. <laughs> That's right. He just grabbed the barrel. He just grabbed the top of it and ripped it off. Eight, boom. Sticks his finger down. Deterrited. <laughs> yes. All right. So Hero, Heroes of Stalingrad, my number four. I didn't know if I was going to fit him into today. You got him in. Woohoo! You took out a tiger tank without a grenade. There. Pressure, pressure's off. Ready. All righty. My number three is Nemo's War. Put out by Victory Point Games, designed by Chris Taylor. Um, I was on the second printing of this Kickstarter. Um, it came out December 21st, 2017. They promised it nine months later. They were three months early. That blew me away. But if you think about it, they did have all the artwork already done. Sure. So it was really, I mean, I wondered if it was like Scotty from Star Trek, where you tell him it's going to take two months, or <laughs> yeah. it's going to take six, right. week, five weeks, and you look like a miracle worker. If so, smart move. Always better to leave him happy than leave him grumpy. Um, so um, it cost $59. And remember, this was the second version of it. Um, it required 30000 a pass, had 191000 which is big compared. Of course, I do a lot of war games, so you hear small numbers. And this is... It's, teams, it's, right? it's, no, no, it's, no. it's barely war. I mean, there's combat, there's some combat in it. Um, so, um, had 4,771 backers, no stretch goals. It did have some extras like a cloth bag and, and I think or a cloth board and some counter bags for 10 bucks. I didn't do that part of it. You um, missed out on the cloth bag? Yeah. So, um, anyways, the, okay. So the game, now what was interesting was 
they came out with a few expansions. They did a pretty good job holding up at this game. This is a couple of them. They had a, there's a third that's like in a, in a cellophane wrap. But I jumped on board when they came out with the first expansions because it was the first expansion. Oh, and by the way, you could buy a copy of the game. So I jumped on it. Um, and then when they come out the other two, they had a chance to upgrade your box. The reason why I upgraded the box, I'm going to open this. That's why I didn't get the bags. I have Crown Royal bags. They did not come with the game. I thought you weren't. You I don't. You want a whiskey? I never had Crown Royal. <laughs> where are you getting the bags? Now we got to go. Golf club covers. Yeah, but where'd you get the bags? Where'd somebody you get who them? does. Somebody who knows somebody who drinks lots of Crown Royal. There we <laughs> okay. go. Uh, anyways, very form fitted to hold everything in there, and they were thinking through the expansions where the first one doesn't quite hold all the stuff as nice and neatly in there. What's also, also cool is. Here's your cards. If you sleeve them, they gave you a spot for sleeve cards. They were only thinking that one through. Um, so about the game itself, not State of Siege. I mean, you would have to squint really hard, rub your eyes to see anything State of Siege-ish in this. Keep going. I'm too young. Okay. <laughs> Just so you know, this is an SMWS sample called Moment of Serenity. 76.135. That's all I'm saying. This is Serenity. Like the spaceship? Good. Yeah, Serenity Now. Oh, I'm thinking of. Yeah, I, know. Yeah, okay. I know, and I was thinking Simon. Serenity Now! Okay. <laughs> um, the game itself. Um, Chris had read the book, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, which is based upon, thought I want to make a game on the book. And it's not, I was going to say, it's not even, I mean, it barely has anything state of siege. It does have cards. And but your actions are dependent on your dot. You have to roll this dice and tell you how many ships to put out and all kinds of stuff. So it doesn't really. And there's no nobody moving in on a track or anything like that. So it might have borrowed a couple of distant ideas, but it's really not. I had the original Nemo's War. That was a. Um, so you've had all three versions. Just two. Oh, okay. The original Nemo's War. You're yeah. saying it's from a different company. No, it's same. It's Victory Point. If you remember their old games, I meant to bring a copy. They had them in this. The they were folio games. Yes. Uh, desk, right. Like a desktop printout yeah, or that was their whole print. deal. Yeah. yeah. And it was it was okay. Then when they came out this one, they went all out mounted yeah, that's boards. That's just a box up. Right? Yeah. Your your Nautilus is a plastic piece. Your um your treasure pieces are little plastic jewels. Very very cool. Um, the board, you know my thing about stay out of the rule book. Yeah. Your charts are all right there. You should be staying out of the rule book unless you're referencing rules. Good or bad. Excellent. 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 I mean, this was really well, well developed, um, well thought out, thematically. You know, I was going to bring, the only, I haven't watched, I haven't actually read the book, but I had the book and record. I was going to bring it. Remember those old book and records from like the 70s? Wow. Had a little put on the, the 45 RPM you put it kind of I never me. had I had books on tape. Yeah, no. Wow, well, you're you're fancy. Well, no, actually 45 put it on. You, you had an eight track. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I, I had those and then I when I got Disney Plus, I I watched the old nineteen fifties one. You have Disney Plus? Kurt, well, I got it free for for the Mandalorian? What? Yeah. I've watched one episode. I'm slowly working through it. Um but now the I, I then was it Kurt? Kirk Douglas, I think he was in it. He, he played uh, Ned. Um, anyways, Michael Douglas' dad, sounds mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. Just died here recently. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I got it right. Yeah, um, I watched that to get a little more background. But, I mean, the cards, very rich in the theme. Those I recognize from the show. I mean, it's just a very thematically strong game. Uh, lots of expansions. And um, something interesting was last year was this thing in the last, last fall. People were really into this thing about putting out their top 20 solitaire games. Geek list top twenty. Yeah, it's too much. I put out twenty five. Wait, that too was much. that I was to make up for the whole when we did the ham tag and people were upset that I had games that weren't solitaire Let only. Them be upset. So I put twenty five solid primary solitaire. Revel in yeah. the upsetness. What was crazy was how many lists this game was on. I mean, it would have been one of the leading go to. I I keep seeing it, and then I'm like, because it's it's solitaire only, right? Or not? yeah, yeah. I kept I, seeing it. And I didn't get on it. There might be a two-player like, variant, but I couldn't imagine what the fun would be being the other but it, day. But it, everything is, you like it. Yeah. What and number the, was it, or do I, does that spoil a list? Oh, no. I think, well, I just, just got it and just played it. So I think it was around number eight, but it would probably be about number four now. Wow. It's still available. I know they're all oh, out, yeah. gone, aren't they? Aren't they out of business? And they got no, well, well what something? happened? They got bought out by somebody else. The yeah. guy who bought them, I think, was interested in the intellectual properties of Nemo's War. Yeah. 
Darkest Night, and um, Dawn of the Zeds. Yes. The ones that are the big money makers. He's not interested in the war games. So a lot of the Victory Point war games, get on them while you can. This one, though, they're going to keep supporting because mm. it's just turning. I mean, you saw it. The second version turned out almost $200,000. Um, the first one, I don't remember what it did because I missed it, but it was doing really well. Cardboard to cash. And they keep cranking out these little expansions. I like that. So, um, but... They look like fancy packaged chocolate. Yeah, what else is neat is, I, I got this from the movie. Nobody really knew what Nemo was up to. What was his agenda? Mm. And you have, like, Nemo's agenda. There's, like, four different ones. Like, you can, you can go to war. You're just out there to sink everything. You're out there for science. You're out there to see the wonders. You're out there to cause some anti-imperialism. And which one you choose is pretty cool. You pull a little card down and stick it on the spot, and then it tells you all the little different things that lines up. It's like a template and shows you, okay, if you go for treasure and you're out for war, it's only worth the value of the treasure itself. But if your goal is treasure, it's worth three times the treasure amount. But if you're mm. out for war, you're getting more for sinking military ships. You have me interested. And, um, and the levels, like if you're out to, to see scientific wonders, as your notoriety goes up, which usually comes from sinking ships, um, in the game, there's different levels of games over you lose. Where if you're for combat, it's the whole longest thing. But I mean, as, as you sink more and more, your notoriety gets higher and more tough ships enter the game. So, I mean, all these different ways to take the game. So it has loads and loads of variability just in the base game. And then you start adding these expansions. I haven't even messed with yet. I just want to explore the base game more and try out all the various and see, see multiple before I start. Okay, I've kind of seen a little bit of this and I want to see what they add. But it's just loads of variability and Chris really knocked this thing out of the bark. He really does a slick job when he jumps onto a topic and and decides to make a game. So hmm. that is my number three, Nemo's War. So my number three is Police Precinct. There's been a second edition of this. This was from Common Man Games. This one's pretty dusty. Um, so a couple neat things on this. Let me give the stats first. Um, there were 207 backers to the original one. I don't know how many on the second run. I think it, it, it actually did really well um, and on the second printing. Uh, $11,992, of course it was funded. Um, uh, the whole idea is what I like is from, of course, those that don't know, I'm a sergeant with the police department, been on almost 25 years. What they actually handle really well on this is calls that come out. And the different kinds of calls, traffic accident, a robbery, a shoplift in progress. And, and it is, um, it's a co-op game. So think pandemic, but what you're dealing with is handling calls for service and crime driven neighborhoods that if you don't respond and deal with gangs that are gathering, um, things will, it's one of the lose conditions. You can get into riots and all kinds of stuff. The other thing that was really cool was uh, they contacted Tom, uh, uh, Tom Basil at the Dice Tower, who I was doing shows with at the time, and something's whistling. Upstairs. Oh, was that upstairs? I thought maybe it was a text you were getting. No. I, I have cool. A, a I have cool, dude. I got like, thought she had a... No, ooh. mine sounds like Captain Kirk's like, communicator. Wow. wow, you're a... You're a Keep on me say Kirk here. Puffing Billy. No. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I know. I was, I was thinking, is that coming from you? Now, it's got to be like sci-fi or Johnny me. Cash to yeah, be on my no, phone. Sure, I'm with you. Johnny Cash. Cash shirt. So um, they got a hold of me and said, could we use your likeness for one of the police characters? I was like, yes. And then one of the streets is named like Vasil Boulevard or something. So there was, there was a neat aspect that was cool. Uh, and I'll admit that's partly why it's on here. But it's the theme that fit and the game worked. I remember thinking, what if this game sucks? And then... I was playing at our board game group, and somebody was like, aren't you supposed to be this guy? And I'm like, yeah. He was like, this guy is like younger and better looking. I'm like, yeah, no. <laughs> the, so whoever, time, yeah, whoever the artist was, I, I had to send him a picture. I'm like, now please, don't make the ears too big and not too ugly. And then the guy goes, well, this guy looks nothing like you. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so uh, police precinct, my number three. Um uh, just just uh, really enjoyable. And then they fixed, there were some printing errors. So the second printing, they fixed those, their rata. And uh, I have that as well. But uh, fun game. Haven't played it much lately, but it actually does a pretty good job of simulating what the day-to-day, -day, how you handle call loads. You mean it's not Barney Miller? 
No, but Barney Miller is one of the best detective. So here's a quick rundown. I'm going to go down my own rabbit trail. Okay. If you want street level work in rough areas with partners. Now, a lot of police departments are just solo cars now, not nearly as much fun. But you know what your day is going to be like. Hill Street Blues hits that partner relationship great. They also cover that command level. I've got a buddy of mine that was a captain, and he said, you know, that, that idea of how you get pressure from City Hall or from the chief or a deputy chief or a, a special community group is portrayed in, in Hill Street. So Hill Street does great. Also shows all the characters. There's so many characters on the police department. Barney Miller is great for detective work. Now, clearly, you don't have the little jail cell sitting in there with the folks. That was brilliant. But the, the characters, again, there is always a coffee guy. There'll be a coffee guy. I was in financial crimes. I was undercover for a while. There's always a coffee guy that's like handling the coffee. All right. And then there's always a phone guy who's all over the phone. So, so Barney Miller hits it. Um, and it's, and it's perfect. And the comedy that's all in there. Um, and then if you want the other side of street work, that's not Hill Street, Hill Street shows that partner gritty stuff. Adam 12. It's funny. I was watching an episode on TV land and they were like responding to a, a barking dog and then a lost kid and then somebody was breaking into cars. Well, they don't do TV shows like that now. They got to be shootings oh, yeah. and murders and serial killers. But back in 68 or whatever, that's still how the calls are. I mean, I remember they showed up and they were like, first thing you do with a missing kid is you research the house and they find the kid underneath the porch. I'm like, that's exactly what we do. So, because half the time they're hiding somewhere. So, all right. My number three. You're bringing back memories. Police precinct. Love, love, love Man, this. Man, the mid to late up. 70s. I catch that stuff. Ascend. I loved Adam 12. I did not like Barney Miller because the humor was way above my head. I and I thought Hill Street Blues is the most boring thing ever. My mom oh, loved that. God, the, the opening sound and the and the uh, when they're running hot through the the streets and it's mm -hmm. kind of snowy, dirty kind of thing, Chicago. But I like <laughs> Strike Force, Robert Stack and his special. I unit. did not watch that or SWAT. I didn't watch SWAT. Yeah. either. oh, I was there, but you know it's glory. But hey, that was around the time the Dukes of Hazard was big. Sure. So there you go. Got it. Very nice. But yeah, Adam Twelve oh, and Emergency. Those are my jams. Oh my God, I was an Emergency fan as yeah. a kid. That was my show. Oh. All righty. My number two is Band of Brothers, um, the Kickstarter. It was designed by Jim Crow and Worthington Publishing. It came out June 20th, 2015. They promised it four months later. Um, it came out 14 months later. Uh, this, I believe, or no, it might have been their first or second, might have been Wilderness Empires, was their um, first attempt to work with China. <laughs> And that's, I, I'm not a specialist in this. I can just, what I would say is, well? my company is like Fortune 50. It takes us nine weeks and we might order 100,000 parts. I'm pretty sure a game that's selling 200, 300, whatever thousand isn't going to get top priority. Language barriers, artwork going back and forth. So i Fortune I've, 50? Yeah. It means you're really up there. Yeah. Yes, worldwide conglomerate. Mm. Um, all thanks to me now. <laughs> no, but the... Um, so, yeah, that's the thing. When I hear all these, when I hear all these, you know, we're going to do all this stuff and have it from China and we're going to have it here in three weeks. I'm like, no, you're not, please. Oh, oh once again, signed copy. Oh, I'm calling well, it out. Yeah. Well, I played, that's cool. I played it. I've been to Jim's house, but we didn't play this. We what? played a different one. A couple of so, Yeah, he taught me Talon, though. Um, but, yeah, he's a cool guy. Um, anyway, so, yeah, what happened was, I might have mentioned this. The first edition came out, A Band of Brothers. Big hit for Worthington. Then Ghost Panzer came out, and it was a standalone game. And he had tweaked the proficiency system and um, turned two die rolls into one, made the math a little easier because, like, I hear three minus negative two. I know it's five. I know not everybody's a math nerd or engineers or just don't like math. And it's a little easier to say three plus two is five. Um, so he had tweaked the math a little that way. So there's player card that changed, and the counter itself changed a little bit. Now, since it's a system, you want your systems to line up. So people said, hey, I want Screaming Eagles to have those type of counters. And he told, here's the formula. But what they wanted to do was when they launched this, it was around Texas Arrows, which is an expansion. Mostly for this, I think it has a little bit of Ghost Panzer in it. But as what they did was they put a second set of counters for this in there. So, hey, if you buy this and the, stand, and the expansion, which you're going to have to have a base game, boom, there you go. You fix it. 
What they did is they went all out on this thing. Um, it uses the geomorphic boards, like if you remember Squad Leader, where you take them and line them, switch them to, to fit your train. But they were the pa paper board, whatever you call that type of, you know what I mean? That Right, it's yeah. not mounted. Yeah, it wasn't mounted. It's just thick and it's annoying because they, they slide around. You try to put a piece of plexi on it. It always just comes just over where people like me just, it just drives you crazy. So they put out mounted boards, improved the counter Serenity art. now. Serenity now. By the way, a little bit of chocolate raspberry in this. Okay. Not in it, but the flavor. Go ahead. Um, I'm not underage drinking in front of an office. No, you don't. This is yeah. a cabinet. Yes. <laughs> he likes fruit I think chocolate. I don't even know what that means. I know it's a movie with Sean Connery. Entrapment? Yeah. It's just like I offer you something that's so good yet illegal, and then I bust you when you go at it. It sounds like it right here. You're all witnessing. Chocolate raspberry. As if anybody thinks I'm 19 or 20. <laughs> okay. Could be. Um, Benjamin Button. There you go. I'm aging backwards. Um, so yeah, the um, what's to say the yeah they upgraded everything and um, what was cool when they did the other one was yeah they gave you a chance. Okay, you could buy Texas Arrows and if you wanted to you could upgrade your copies. Texas Arrows they did a pretty cool thing that they put a paperboard and a mounted board in there. So whichever way you went with this would be fine. Wow. Um, Keep people happy. Yeah. So I took it. I upgraded everything. Took my spare counters. Put them. Old band of brothers. Then traded it off, and said, and I threw a copy of the rule book in there and said, hey, you've got basically the second edition without mounted stuff. Um, but I did upgrade mine. It was a pretty good deal. Um, they had a deal where you could buy all three of them for 120. So 40 bucks a piece for these were pretty good. Pretty good. Um, it required 10,000 to pass. It made 83,000, which was huge for Wordington. A lot of their stuff used it as about 15. Yeah. I always said this is their this is their cash cow. Oh, yeah. 721 yeah. backers. Yeah. Usually they run about 200 to 250. Yeah. They had nine for nine stretch goals. They made a battle manual. I meant to put it in there. It, wasn't, it was just a neat little designer notes, tips, strategies, pretty cool stuff. Um, it, they had three patches, the sleeve patches for all three of the groups. Uh, Tens extra scenarios, and then they made the counter tray, which I did not include in this. We pulled it out of the other one. Right, the counter right. tray was kind of thrown on at the end, and I think they wanted one counter tray they was thinking could work for all future games, and they ended up making something that doesn't really work for any game. Whatever game you had it in, though, it looked awesome. Yeah, Caesar's Gallic War. Boom, that was it. But yeah, like, well, it, I think they were setting up to think about blocks, and they made two big areas, and it just, I tried, because I'm an organizational freak, didn't yes. work. Yes. And it was just better to put your stuff in baggies and throw them in there. Um, so that didn't work, but you know what, if you're really going to get upset about the ninth stretch goal, it wasn't everything I thought it would be really get a life. Um, so, uh, it was a mega hit. I mean, the game's gorgeous. This is like the box also really thick box. I mean, this is like GMT compass type of quality. They right. real this was, yeah. this was when Worthington really stepped up their game to say, we want to play the, the big boys. were a little flimsy. Yeah. yeah. Um, the, um, so yeah, they went all out for their big game. And it's still generating for them. So I loved it. Excellent. And just not enough good things I can say about that. And I've said plenty in other videos. So my number two, Band of Brothers. Yep. All right. My number two. And this is where I took Judd's idea of just the box <laughs> cover because this is a beast. This is Storm Hollow, a storyboard game. Now, a couple things on this. There were 887 backers that got $87,757. I went for the Deluxe, which had tons of extra stuff in it. I can't even remember all the stuff that was in it. It took, I can't, five to six years to come to fruition. A lot of people thought it was going to fail. Um... Unbelievable content, which I'll get to in a second. And Game Salute actually jumped in and kind of saved the day. So the folks that did this, Angela Hickman, uh, Newham, and Julian Liberian Titus, they are role players. And they wanted to come up with a, um, a lighter entry-level storyboard type role-playing system that would allow families and kids to come in and play this fanciful, dream-like story. At the time, my kids, I think, were like two and not even one. And I thought, oh, this will be perfect. Here's the cool thing. It takes forever to come to fruition. It happens. It shows up. 
It's gorgeous. Bo loves it. Turns out Bo, my 13 year old, come tomorrow, is more of a role player. The games, the board games he likes to play, uh, Zombie Side and such, have, he likes to add in, he wants more of a role playing feel to them. He adored this and it's such a deep dive. We add it out on the table and, and you're just, you know, it's this, I don't even know how to describe it. It's this fanciful world and the map and the, the, the pictures on it elicit stories by themselves. And then as you go to those areas, it's then a deep dive into that area in and of itself. And this map is huge. I'll throw, I'll probably throw in a couple photos just so you see it. What was so bizarre was, um, what, what did I back on this? I want to say, I don't have it on here. I think it was like $110 for the content that's in here. Hardbound books and, the, and two styles of map. Um, they've got a mounted map board, which actually had some problems with it. It's gorgeous. But then they included a poster map, which was actually bigger. And as a war gamer, I had my Lexan plexiglass and I was like, oh, yeah, we're using that. I'm not using this mounted board. Put it underneath and it was perfect. So it's been, I'm hoping to, to get this in the, the grandson who's five has seen it. This is just a perfect way to get kids to immerse themselves in a game and a story like environment and to, and to just explore. And I have been thrilled with this game. Um, you know, as a kid, I didn't really do too much role playing stuff, but, uh, a couple things here or there, but, uh, I mean, it's been so much fun. I'm trying to get my wife to do it, but Liz does not like story based games so much. So she was like, eh, it's fake. <laughs> I'm like, well, it's all fake. <laughs> so, you know, she'll go watch a Marvel movie, but this is fake. I'm like, come on, come on. <laughs> so, um, uh, I, this was one where I thought I was probably maybe going to lose the money. They had big dreams. I thought, oh my God, I backed this and it's, there's, they're not going to be able to pull this off. They had not, they literally, this was probably more how Kickstarter was imagined. They had an idea. They had an outline. They had their themes all flushed out, but none of the work was done. And it would have gone nowhere if Game Salute hadn't picked it up. And I'm, I'm actually Absolute, I think stunned. the one that bought Victory Point games. Really? Okay. Sounds so, familiar. But um, Storm Hollow. Okay. Huge. Before we hit our number one, uh, the honorable mentions. Oh, yeah. Lush Mojo. Here are yes. a few honorable mentions. Okay, I had three of them. Uh, Britain versus France, 1750. Um, Hold Fast Korea and Wilderness Empires. The last two were Worthington Publishing. I don't remember who the first one was. I, it's, I think it was a first-time company. Perfect. And the way we're going to do this is just probably flash the uh, covers up, not talk too much about them, but we want to get them in. I wanted to mention Seventh Continent. Got it. First edition. Loved it. Was fully immersed. Uh, Zaya, Legends of a Drift System. Uh, very neat, fun, space. Um, the guy went for it, independent dude, hit it. And one infamous, I'm going to tell you right now, I went 250 bucks in on upfront. 250 bucks in on upfront. All I did was help pay a lawyer. You chose. <laughs> Holy. Loser! All right, number one, baby. Hit the number one. one. You knew it was a Kickstarter. You probably knew what it was before the oh, video started. Yeah. Hands in the Sea. Um, Nightworks published. Daniel Berger's designer. The campaign ended March 28th, 2015. Said it would be out eight months later. It was out 17 months later. That's okay. There was I can tell you a little bit about that. Dude, that uh, is interesting. Uh, $50 was the cost. Took $15,000 to pass it. Made over $35,000. And this was huge. I mean, Nightworks does a lot of little small Euro type of things. This, I think this was by far the biggest cash cow they put out. Hmm. 556 backers, nine for nine on the stretch goals, specialized components. Um, the They might upgrade the Rome piece to something fancy. The ship piece, instead of just being like what? a cube, it looks like piece? a little ship. Rome ship. ship. You did not emphasize ship. the piece. Ship. <laughs> Naval piece. Um <laughs> It did have some extras. You could buy you could buy the companion book. Um, there was also an expansion which was superb. Um, that 
and it toned down the events because some people did not like, they thought the events were too powerful, too, I was like, dude, that's what happened. I mean, it sunk their fleet, um, <laughs> storms at sea. But I mean, he had some toned down events, but the alternate strategy cards with the cost on them were awesome. Anyway, um, so they put a second edition out and it got 916 backers because after this came thing came out, it got great hype. And people started saying, boy, I really regretted not getting that. So they put out a second edition, 916 backers. The first had 556. Wow. $20,000 goal made $55,000 and went five for six on its stretch goals. Hmm. So altogether, this thing has made about almost $90,000, which is huge when you look at what night, the other night works things. This came out, um, I mean, 2013, I got on board as a play tester. I wasn't really, a, we wasn't really a developer. We just, just played it all the time. And I mean, I did a lot, gave lots of feedback and Dan and I played this a bunch and I watched him try to go around and get people. I mean, try to get, try to shop this around. Nightworks was, he's from, he was from Colorado at the time. Nightworks was from Colorado hmm. and, uh, Forged in Steel, I think is the name of the game. The guy who designed that, he knew Dan and Daniel Dean. I don't know if he goes by Dan. He might be slapping me next time he sees me. Um, I always call him Dan the Man. Um, Perfect. Anyway, uh, told Don, who owns Nightworks, about you really need to look at this game. So then he got into it. And Don's really, really a cool guy. I mean, he went all out to write Martin Wallace and say, are you okay if we do this? He didn't have to do it. He just did no. it as a courtesy. Yeah, you can't, um, you can't uh, lock in a mechanic. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I mean, just really, and, and what's interesting, like a lot of these things, Don guy with the day job, this is his side thing. This isn't his where you, oh, you know, yeah. this is my, well, that's you. Yeah. Speaking of Denver, by the way, Stranahan's Snowflake. That's what this is. It's very hard to get Stranahan's a distillery in Denver. As soon as you said it. More entrapment. Two counts against it. you, man. That's right. Snowflake, meaning it's a one-off. Okay. Um, the, um. Sorry. Um, yeah, so he got on board with this. And see, when I said there's a delay, he had to hire the artist because Dan had a lot of um, artwork. Some of it was public domain, some of it wasn't. You know, it was just our little play around his for his playtest kits and that I was using for Vassal at the time and that we play tested on. So they had to go out and get artwork. And then one of the guys at point, I forget his name, I can see his avatar's point. And you know, some of this stuff isn't Jimmy. historical to the re to the time. So they went in and redid a lot of the artwork. So that's part of the delays. Welcome to China, back and forth. And um, it was interesting because Don really did his homework on this stuff. Because one of the things he looked at was metal coins. But And people started getting excited as a possible stretch goal. And he started adding them. He's like, no, nah, it's going to add too much to the cost of shipping, blah, 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 blah. So, mm -hmm. I mean, he really went all out. And so he thought, yeah, we can. He, he'd check it out ahead of time with his people. Can I make a specialized piece for this? Um, and something really cool. This is this tells you a lot about his character. Because um, what they say, integrity is when nobody's looking. When the, when the game was about two months from coming out, I asked Don, hey, can I get the final artwork to upgrade the Vassal module? And I think I waited like a month after the game was out to release it. And he said, sure. He sent it to me. And this is a note for all you publisher guys. If you got a Vassal person, run all the artwork by them. Really? Um, I found an error. Ooh. The, what did you find? The, the magistrate cards each had three powers. The first two were the same. The third was unique to each side, and they were the same. And I said, uh-oh, mm. Carthage magistrate is supposed to have a, a different power. And then I also noticed that the, I think it was the Cretan archers or somebody had a was supposed to be able to block raids, and it wasn't on there. And I said, I wrote him, and I said, or him and Dan, I said, I found two errors on this thing. And like, uh-oh. <laughs> well, I think what had happened was he had two sheets of cards, looked over the first, they're fine, and said, okay. Well, as a developer, when I did France 1944, I mean, I was going over every counter with a fine-tooth comb, looking at the old, the new, making sure all the numbers match. That's kind of stuff. We didn't really have a developer, and I was just a play tester. So. Now but, um, you are. Yeah, but now, now it would be like, do that. This was cool. If nothing would have been said, because nobody knew the game except for those of us who had play tested it, and really Dan and I was the one who really knew like every card in the deck. Mm -hmm. If nothing had been said, it would have went out. The game would have been a pretty darn good game, and nobody had been the wiser. But Don was really bothered by this. I think he and Dan went through and found like six cards that had airs in them. And he said, so he went to an American group and said, can you make this? Because I need it now. And they said, yeah. Well, so he put them in there. And then the colors didn't quite match. Sure. Which I've heard that's very difficult oh to get colors God. to match. Because like, like humidity and stuff yeah. like this. Well, he was annoyed by it. 
So he told the people, I'm going to go back to my original publisher. I'm going to get the cards. They're going to be like three months late. He did all this out of his own pocket. He was already cutting into his own profits twice to make this air right that nobody knew about except for three of us. Wow. So I thought, wow, that's really a dude. So I sent him like a few bucks and said, here, don't, I don't want to know. Yeah. And you're thinking, did you get a free copy? Reference. No, I really wanted to be, I wanted to back this because I want to show people, I was putting my money where my mouth was. I didn't make any money off of this. Um, what was funny when we did the Kickstarter stretch goals, Don wrote me after, because everything they'd hit, just boom, boom, they kept hitting them. When he hit his ninth one, he wrote me and he said, can you think of anything else? Because uh, Dan couldn't. And I, and I go, well, you could offer a lock of Dan's hair so I could like clone him and make my own Dan and have somebody to play with. <laughs> it wasn't a stretch goal. As a joke, I he sent this to that. me. You told me about yeah. this. Um, also, what was pretty cool was when they did the second edition, I didn't back it because the first edition was perfect for me. They tweaked the the map a little bit, like some of the way the creases and folds, it laid out fine. Just some people, they, they had a new improved system. Artwork is the same. I think they had a flip map where you could have a little less detail or something. But the stuff was all there. Tweaked the rule book a little bit to clarify some things. Um, very little, though. So um, I was like, oh, I'm fine. This is a perfect game, in my opinion. I mean, I'm. I'm totally happy with mine, so I'm going to go out and back a second one. Well, uh, oh, six months ago or so, because this second edition was out for a while, he Don wrote me and said, hey, send me your address. Hmm. He sent me a second edition. Does it look the same box-wise and everything? Um, yeah, it just says second edition. Okay. This, is, this is my first edition one. Um, but the um, he sent me a second edition, and then he sent me a second edition, edition upgrade. So if you happen to see when I oh. pop this open, you're like, hey, what's this? What's this tissue paper? Have you not played this game? No, this is the second edition stuff all in the game itself. They did upgrade a few thicknesses Does on that components. Bother you? No. Can I rip that off? Yes. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> I thought you were going to be like slapping my hand. Don't touch it. I preserved the tissue paper. In my game. So, yeah, I loved the, I mean, I loved everything about the Kickstarter. I mean, the only thing I was, I just wanted to, I wanted to know, you know, the second it came out. So I had, you know, I had to wait, but I'm glad they took the time to get it all right and turned out with a beautiful game that's just got raves and raves since this came out. Yeah. Um, so that is my number one, Hands in the Sea. Sweet. Good call. The Snowflake is good, but not as good as the Serenity now. But I'm bringing you over my number one Kickstarter game. Zombie side, the original zombie side. Let me set it down so it's not bouncing all over the place. Cool mini or not, this game goes huge. I backed it. Um, there were 5,258 other backers, and it brought in $781,597. I thought my 200 was pretty good. Yes. Um, this blew up. It had, of course, a ton of minis. Um, and then even when it came out, I was, we were just moving into this house when the Kickstarter was going to finish. So it was about 2012, I think. I don't I can't remember. But um, the game went crazy on the secondary market. I mean, there was somebody, somebody sold one of theirs for a thousand bucks. Yeah, you just couldn't find it. It had all these real limited stretch goals, like limited figures, all this stuff. I mean, cool mini or not blew up and became a top tier game developer, Ameritrash, like You that. know, word of the wise, if your game sells 700,000 and it's in demand, they will make another copy. Yeah, if well, you yeah. are patient. Well, 5,258. Yeah, if you start playing through all those unplayed well, games you got. here's the deal. No, you could go get this in retail, mm -hmm. but you could never, they said they will never put out the stretch goals, ever. Now, they since have recreated those characters in different sculpts so people could get them. Mm -hmm. But you, uh, unless they've done something new, I haven't followed them the last few years, you could not get those other ones. Sometimes they would hand them out at cons and stuff. So they really preserved that. They were a miniatures company that kind of was like, my understanding is almost like a BGG for miniatures. So cool mini or not. You could put your minis up that you painted and people would say they liked them or they didn't. Uh, and then it morphed into this. Here's what I like about the game. Um, uh, the the zombies kind of, you know, I'd seen zombie land and stuff. So I was like, well, this should be cool. 
Um, Bo ended up loving it. It's got a role-playing-ish um, feel to it. Um, the rule set's a little bit cumbersome. They're having a second version, which I will not get. Um, I've gone all in on the first version of multiple stuff. You may see that at some other point in time. Um, but Bo loves it. The minis, the, the zombies that are there, give you that press of the horde. They're just overwhelming. And if you don't think smart, you will get, you will get overwhelmed and go down epically. The other thing is my co-host for the Whiskey Show, he's not a gamer per se. He came over, played this, was giving me some crap as we were playing it, and then the theme and the story took over, and he was like, this is awesome. He went and bought multiple, cop, you know, Zombicide 1, 2, 3, whatever, played with his teenage boys, and it's something, one of them's in college now, and they'll still pull it out, and he'll send me a photo. His boys will say, let's do it. And they'll spend a couple hours around the table just having fun and a zombie side romp. So it spawned uh, three different versions, all kinds of subversions in that. It spawned a whole fantasy side called Black Plague, same thing, but done like in medieval times under a fantasy thing, expansions for that. Then they did a space thing called Zombicide Invaders, which is everything, you know, alien, predator, whatever. I did not get that. Now they've gone back and they're creating a second updated version that has all this cool trays and stuff. I didn't need it. Zombicide is probably the best game that I've gotten on Kickstarter. And they really hit their times and their, their goals. It's a French uh, company that also puts it out. Guillotine Games, I believe. So... And that's our kickstart. Well, there's one more thing I wanted to mention on this. And then we got to do a wrap up and get their list too. Yes. Go. Um, I didn't mention, if you bought the first edition retail or something, you can go out on their website and buy all that Kickstarter adder. Mm. Or the, basically, you can buy the second edition upgrade kit for yours. The second edition had all that stuff in it, along with like the board, so the expansion pack and all that. And then they ended up having an add-on set with the metal coins if you wanted to buy them separately, which Don sent those to me because he's a cool guy. Oh. But so it was and all out there. So if you had you the get first, the hair? you can't get the hair. Is he bald, basically? Yeah, if everybody got it. <laughs> he's going. I think he's going to WBC. If you bring your shears, sneak up behind him. Um, have his hair. So there you go. So um, first of all, a couple things. Uh, please put your top five list in here as well. Even if you don't have five. Yeah, you can put whatever in there because if you put it in the comments or um, I'll post this up on BGG under, I have my own little page, Bart Brunching, so you can see that. Judd will usually reference it as well. Um, I, I will check all three, but the best place you could put the comments is actually on the YouTube video because what I'm starting to do, what I'm going to continue to do is then do a, a fan top five update on a live show. So I'll, I'll go in and read, not guaranteeing to read everybody's name, but I'll read uh, most people's or a lot of people's names and their list. This could grow bigger and bigger, and I wouldn't be able to get them all in there. But I love bringing in the fans list as well because it's just nice to get all these games out there. Second of all, please, if you like Hamtag, Hamtag Lite, uh, take a look at Patreon. Go to Bonding with Board Games. It's just a micro way you can micro fund, help, the, help this channel keep going. Um, help me cover costs, camera, internet connection, all that kind of stuff. So that's Patreon. Bonding yeah, I got somebody asked me once about if I was going to make videos. Like, are you kidding? You know how much that equipment costs? Yeah. Ah, I'm making a video. Actually, the cameras, cell phone cameras are getting so good. There are some mounts, and you can film pretty good. And I'm sure they're going to, you know, uh, mic, lighting, uh, internet connection for the lives. But it's getting cheaper and cheaper with these phones. We've got um, the Scotch Show, Scotch Desk Dummies does phenomenal. We upgraded to a very expensive 35 millimeter camera that does all this stuff that makes it up to 4K. But So check that out, but please put your list in. We want this to be interactive. We have a blast doing it. I will poke fun sometimes, may even pour a dram when you go really deep into Band of Brothers because then I'm enjoying it as well. <laughs> Actually, the deep one, I think you went deeper. What was your fifth one? No, it was Worthington. Worthington's, yeah, yeah you were way deep. American yeah. Revolution is hard you to shut me up. Oh, yeah. Babylon you 5, love, yes. American Revolution. Ticonderoga, you've been in the fort. I've been in the fort. All right. Um, game it, you gaming gods. See you guys.